In the previous video, we dealt with esophagus. Now it's the turn for the other part of alimentary canal or the part of the alimentary canal that comes right after esophagus and that is your stomach. So stomach forms the bag of the alimentary canal. It is the widest part of the alimentary canal that is present between esophagus and duodenum. First, let's look at the location of stomach, then we can deal with the anatomy of it. And what's the best way to understand anatomy of any organ? It's through a diagram. So let's look at the diagram of stomach. Here's what a typical stomach looks like. The stomach is the bag of the alimentary canal because it is extremely wide and can adjust a lot of food inside of it for hours. First, let's look at the location. Right above stomach, there's diaphragm. Diaphragm is the part of a respiratory system. Penetrating the diaphragm comes the esophagus. So esophagus penetrates the diaphragm from above. The part above diaphragm is the thoracic cavity. The part above diaphragm is the thoracic cavity and the part below diaphragm is the abdominal cavity. I've already mentioned this as well in the previous video. What did I say? So there's your diaphragm, right? Above your diaphragm is the thoracic cavity that is present in the thorax, the chest region. And then below the diaphragm, there's your abdominal cavity that is present in the abdomen right here. In the abdominal cavity is the stomach. The stomach is found between the esophagus and duodenum. So here's your esophagus that arises in the thoracic cavity and ends in the abdominal cavity after joining with the stomach. And here's the duodenum that joins the stomach at its end. The stomach is guarded by two sphincters. So one sphincter is present right here and the other sphincter is present right here. The first sphincter marks the start of the stomach and the second sphincter marks the end of the stomach. The stomach is a slightly J-shaped organ and it is divided into four major parts. The part of the stomach that is present directly in contact with esophagus right here is the cardiac region. The part of the stomach that forms the hump of the stomach like the hump of a camel is the fundus. The part of the stomach that is present at the end of stomach and forms a funnel shape is the pylorus. Between the pylorus and the fundus is the major part of the stomach which is called the body. What did I say? So the part of the stomach that is in direct contact with the esophagus or the part of the stomach that forms the start of the beginning of the stomach is the cardiac region. The part of the stomach that forms the hump of the stomach, like the hump of a camel, is the fundus region. The part of the stomach that is present at the end of the stomach, which is funnel shaped, is the pylorus of the stomach. And finally, the majority part of the stomach that is present between fundus and pylorus is the body of stomach. So these are the four major parts of a stomach. If you look at the wall of a stomach, you can study its histology. And I've already mentioned histology of a typical part of alimentary canal in the previous video. The wall of the stomach contains four different layers from outside to inside. There's your serosa, then muscularis, then submucosa, and finally, mucosa. 
muscularis usually contains outer longitudinal muscle not usually almost all the time contains outer longitudinal muscle and inner circular muscle if you don't know what these layers are what these muscles are please and i repeat please watch my previous video on histology of alimentary canal inner circular muscle however stomach and only in case of stomach throughout your alimentary canal only in case of stomach there's an extra layer in muscularis or extra muscle in muscularis which is present even inside the inner circular muscle and that's the oblique muscle oblique muscle is called so because the muscle is obliquely present just like this the function of oblique muscle is churning of food inside stomach both mechanical digestion and chemical digestion takes place mechanical digestion refers to the churning of food that takes place inside stomach with the help of oblique muscle that is the stomach churns the food or breaks the food with the help of the movement of its muscle and the chemical digestion of the food takes place inside the stomach with the help of gastric enzymes secreted by the gastric glands present in it okay so now let's talk about the two sphincters that are present at the two ends of the stomach the first sphincter that is present at the beginning of the stomach is also present at the end of the esophag esophagus or at the lower region of the esophagus so also called lower esophageal sphincter this sphincter is also present at the junction of esophagus and stomach or at the region where esophagus meets with stomach so also called gastro esophageal sphincter gastro refers to stomach esophageal refers to esophagus so the sphincter that is present at the junction of at the junction of stomach and esophagus is the gastroesophageal sphincter similarly it's also called cardiac sphincter you might have already guessed why because it is present at the junction of esophagus with stomach at the cardiac region and that's why this sphincter is also called cardiac sphincter sphincter is nothing but a circular mus muscle that can close and open as per the requirement of the organ which you'll come to understand soon enough so here's the second sphincter what's the name of the second sphincter since the second sphincter is present at the end of the funnel shaped pylorus of the stomach it's known as pyloric sphincter as simple as that so now let's look at the function of both these sphincters so here's your esophagus long 25 centimeter pipe at the end of the esophagus there's your stomach so the beginning of the stomach is guarded by cardiac sphincter and the end of the stomach is guarded by pyloric sphincter so at two ends there are two sphincters these two sphincters can close and open for the food to enter from esophagus into the stomach the cardiac sphincter needs to be open as soon as the food enters the stomach the cardiac sphincter closes so that the gastric content that is present inside the stomach can't reflux or can't go back into the esophagus cause problem when digestion is taking place inside the stomach both the sphincters that is the cardiac sphincters and the pyloric sphincter are closed just imagine of a milk bag maybe of company ddc and this it doesn't matter a milk bag if you make two cords at the two ends of the milk bag and pins them the milk stays inside the milk bag imagine the fingers that you have used to pinch off the two ends of the milk bag to be the two sphincters the upper to be the cardiac sphincter and the lower to be the pyloric sphincter at this moment both cardiac sphincter and pyloric sphincter are closed so the milk remains inside the milk bag so let's suppose the digestion has already completed inside the milk bag so the milk bag needs to travel into the next part of the alimentary canal at that point the pyloric sphincter present at the bottom of the milk bag opens so the pyloric sphincter was closed 
now it opens as soon as the pyloric sphincter opens the content of the milk bag can now flow outside similarly the content of the stomach can enter the duodenum so that's the fun that's basically the function of sphincter it closes and then opens there are circular muscles that can close and open as per the need of the organ forming the innermost wall of the stomach so here's your wall here's the wall of the stomach forming the innermost layer of the wall of the stomach is mucosa and the mucosa is found in the form of folds let's make a cross section of the stomach so i took a cross section of this stomach or a transverse section of this stomach upon looking at this transverse section you can see something like this so here's the outer wall of the stomach and then there's the inner wall which contains mucosa and the mucosa is present in the form of folds in the form of folds 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 inside there's the empty space or the gut where the food lies at this moment the stomach is unstressed cause inside stomach there's no gastric content as soon as the stomach gets filled with gastric content that is the content found inside the stomach food gastric juices all that stuff gastric content the inner wall stretches as soon as it stretches the gap inside the stomach increases see the inner wall stretches first the inner wall was folded now this inner wall stretches and becomes straight and due to that reason the space inside increases as well this inner wall with multiple foldings that can stretch is known as gastric rugi so inside there are multiple foldings inner foldings and these inner foldings are nothing but gastric rugi gastric refers to stomach and rugi refers to the inner foldings present and the whole function or the whole purpose of gastric rugi is to stretch whenever the stomach needs to be distended or filled and that's it for the anatomy of stomach next video is going to be upon gastric glands see you